I spent 40 years of my life in production agriculture. There is no doubt in my mind that factory farming is cruel, inhumane, and non-sustainable. Spending 40 years of my life with animals, you learn a lot of things about them. Very few people realize that a pig is smarter than a dog. On a farm, you learn in a big hurry that if you have a gate that is not securely fastened, a pig will learn how to open it more so than any other animal. A cow will establish which calf is hers. You take one cow and hundreds of calves, she will pick out her own animal every time. Believe it or not, when cows go to eat or drink, they will leave the calves in the accompaniment of babysitters that will look after them. The animals are of a much more complex society than what we ever imagined. A lot of people read Genesis 126, which describes God giving Adam dominion over the creatures, and stop there. Reading on in Genesis 1:29 to 30, God instructs Adam, Eve, and all the creatures to consume a vegetarian diet. Then God looked upon this harmonious creation and called it very good. Clearly, dominion can't mean brutal tyranny over animals. I think dominion was meant to describe good, responsible stewardship of God's creation, similar to the dominion of a good king over his subjects. So when I think about my diet and how I eat or the clothes I wear, I try and eat and to purchase uh, clothing and other items in a way so that to the degree I possibly can, I create as much joy and, and, and happiness for all of God's creatures uh, as I can, and I create as little suffering and pain. And, um, and for me, that's imitating the love of God, um, and that gives me joy. Um, I can't do that perfectly, um, and to that degree, I live in a fallen world, and I live by grace. I'm not perfect, but I'm called to love um, as powerfully and mightily as I can. And so, not just in terms of diet, but in terms of, of everything I do in my life, I try to maximize joy, maximize blessing, and minimize pain. Adopting a vegan diet and lifestyle, I think, is the single most important thing we can do to honor Jesus Christ and to emulate his nonviolence and compassion. I became a vegetarian because I wanted to uh, incorporate my Christian faith into my daily life. I was looking for concrete practices that would give an expression to my confidence in God and my belief that we worship a God of peace, a God of love, and a God who is the savior of the whole world, that Jesus died not, on, not only for humans, but for all living creatures, and he died to redeem every creature from pain and from suffering. I have found, it, would, it never occurred to me to eat meat again. Um, and sometimes those are moral reasons, sometimes those are reasons inspired by my faith. Um, but most of the time it's just the most sort of obvious thing to be and to do. And it's both a being and a doing thing. I am a vegetarian uh, in terms of my identity, but also it's a meal by meal choice to remain such. And, and there's a positive momentum that builds on itself there which, which helps propel me to, to remain a vegetarian. There's a lot of different levels to being a Christian. And I think the Gospels acknowledge this. I think most Christian teachers have acknowledged this. And one of the things that I've experienced in my life and I see around me and as a leader of a congregation, I, I try to engage others in recognizing, is that you don't get it all at once. You get it incrementally. Now, if we look at Jesus, we see there a very powerful nonviolent witness. Maybe we don't know much about his diet, but it certainly seems that his diet would likely express the kind of compassion which we do know that he expressed to countless individuals in the Gospels. Being a vegetarian is one manifestation of that compassion which Christ inspires me to live out. There are others. There are people who I have infinite respect for who live it out better, more fully, than I ever will. 
but along life's journey, taking that step to make my diet consistent with my faith is a very important step to take. For me, being a Christian is all about following Jesus. And my key question is, what was Jesus like? What does it mean to follow him? And uh, how do we practice Christian discipleship today in these times? And early on, I concluded with Mahatma Gandhi uh, that Jesus is the greatest practitioner of nonviolence in the history of the world. And Gandhi said that the only people who don't know Jesus as nonviolent are Christians. There's something that is missing in most churches today, and that's the expansion of our love for a fellow human being. And maybe the fellow human beings that are in our own circle or our own church or family or community. We forget about that our loving God has to be extended unlimitedly because that's the way God is. He's universal. He's infinite. And unless we learn to extend our love that way, we're not living the way he wants us to. We have to love the animals. We have to love his physical creation, the environment. And as loving it, we have to take care of it. And that's something that's missing from the church today. You know, most Christians every week in church will say, um, praise God, all creatures here below. But they'll think to themselves, praise God, all humans. But all creatures is right. All creatures is biblical. All creatures is what Christianity says. And when we look around and we see the whole chorus of creation and all animals praising God and God delighting in that, I think as Christians we have to think real seriously about whether or not we're going to be killing other members of the choir. I think that if we want to make the whole creation praise God as fully and richly as possible and give God all the delight it possibly can, then we'll change the way we treat animals. And with particular regard to factory farms, which are just inexcusable, we will, we will make that stop and we will not be silent about this sort of abuse of millions and millions of animals every day simply so we can have what tastes good. For that, there's not an excuse. Thank you for watching. We are convinced that a plant-based diet helps avoid the inherent cruelties of factory farming, helps maintain the health of our bodies, the temple of the Holy Spirit, and helps preserve the environment. Paul instructs believers to pray ceaselessly. Showing respect for God's creation every time we have a vegetarian meal is, for us, a kind of thankful prayer. It is one way we may honor God's creation.